Well guys, I saw it again. Another video talking about how you lock up your Brompton outside. I've seen quite a few of these. And in this video, I'm gonna tell you guys the four reasons why I would never, ever leave my Brompton locked up outside. see those two bikes right there? That's the first reason why I would never lock up my Brompton outside. I would never lock it up because of unintentional damage. <laughs> Kryptonite U-lock. Anyway, you see how a lot of these bicycle racks are designed and you see the fact that your frame can hit up against it? A lot of times on the Brompton you can kind of lean it against the wheels or whatever but sometimes you know the wind or maybe somebody else will move the bike and it'll fall over well then that causes your uh, frame to get scratched up and everything so these things are not definitely good for uh, keeping your bike from getting scratched and beat up on top of that somebody else can park right next to you right on the next side and you see how this pedal sticks over right here well these pedals are pretty damn sharp man look at that well these pedals can dig right into the side of somebody's frame if somebody parks their bike right here, well, their pedal can dig right into your frame, and that's not a good thing. Do you guys see this huge nick in my paint? This obviously was my old commuting bike. This is the bike I commuted to work for years on. And this nick right here, this huge nick that went all the way down to the metal, that was done by some junky bike that some kid had parked right next to mine in one of those bicycle rack things that I just showed you. And basically what had happened was he parked the bike right next to mine and his handlebars did not have any grips. They didn't have any rubber grips on them. They were just bare metal. And when he flopped his bicycle over onto the, uh, the bicycle parking stand and he locked it up, his handlebar was digging right into the side of my bicycle. And I know it was because I saw it and I saw my paint on his handlebar. So that just goes to show you how these people don't care. They don't think about the damage that they cause to other people's bicycles on those bicycle racks. So that's what I mean guys by unintentional damage. There are so many people in this city, so many people that ride crappy beat up bikes that look like this one right here. And the reason why is because there's a lot of theft here in Denver. And we'll get into that later on in the video. But since there is a lot of theft here in Denver, a lot of people ride bikes that are beat up and junky because they're not attractive to thieves. So they can ride that junky bike and they don't have to worry about somebody stealing it. So when those guys come up to a bicycle rack, they just slam their bicycle right into the rack, into whoever's bike happens to be there. Do you think they're careful about it at all? Most of the time, they're not careful. They don't really care. They don't care about their bike. They're definitely not gonna care about anybody else's. So yes, unintentional damage is one of the reasons why I will never lock my Brompton up outside. Okay guys, the second reason why I would never think about leaving my Brompton outside, the reason is related to the first reason. The first reason was unintentional damage. Now we're talking about intentional damage. We're talking about vandalism. Vandalism is a really big problem in any major city. Lots of people don't have respect for other people's property. Lots of people don't care, you know? 
There's people out there that'll slash your tires just for the fun of doing it. There's punk kids that will spray paint your bicycle. Um, a buddy of mine had the spokes of his bicycle cut. It looked like somebody took wire cutters and cut the spokes of the bicycle. I, I've known people have had that happen. I know people that have slashed seats. There's all kinds of things that people do to bicycles all the time. I mean, when you really look at how many people out there are willing to break windows of a Capitol building and spray paint uh, obscenities all over the Capitol building, <laughs> There's, th this wasn't done by one person. This was done by hundreds of people. Hundreds of people, if you look at everything that's been done to this place. So just think about that for a second, okay? Think about how many people are brazen, brazen enough to deface and damage and vandalize the Capitol building, the most important building in our city. <laughs> and do you think that those people would think twice about damaging your bike if they thought they wanted to just for fun? And those people are running around the streets every single day. They don't care about your bicycle. They don't care about your property. I've seen carbon frames that it looked like somebody took a hammer to or metal bicycles that somebody took a hammer to just to be douchebags because there's tons and tons and tons of punks out there. And that's the second reason why I would never leave my Brompton locked up outside because of vandalism. And it happens every single day, all the time. Okay guys, the third reason why I would never think about leaving my Brompton locked up outside, it's got to do with people messing with your bike. Instead of people damaging your bike, uh, you have to worry also about people playing tricks on you or just being douchebags in general. And if you don't think there are a lot of people in this city and every city in all over the world that would definitely mess with your bike just to be a douchebag, you got another thing coming. This happens all the time. I know three people that this has happened to. When people play pranks on you or mess with your bike, it usually can range in severity from just minor nuisance to potentially life-threatening. Now, let me give you a couple of examples. I'll give you an example of something that's kind of minor nuisance to something that's extremely severe. Both happened to me. I had a person at my job pull the quick release lever on my front wheel. How do I know somebody did that? Because quick release levers don't just come undone. Okay, if they did, there'd be massive lawsuits all over the world from wheels coming off of bicycles. They don't just come undone. And mine are always tight. Mine are always on more of the tighter side than they are the looser side. So basically, I get halfway down the road commuting home from work and I hear this rattle. And I'm like, what the hell? Where is that rattle coming from? And then when I look down, I noticed that my front quick release lever had been unlatched. So basically what had happened is somebody that hangs around out front of the building at work unlatched it. If I hit a good sized chug hole, the axle could have came right out of my bicycle very easily. So it could have potentially been a lot worse. I could have potentially been very, very hurt. But in this particular case, I wasn't. But that's an example of somebody messing with your bike, somebody screwing with your bike. Now on the Brompton, you don't have quick release levers, but you do have nuts. So. Um, there are people that will unloosen those as well, I'm sure. All it takes is a simple crescent wrench. That little prank that somebody played on me, that was potentially life-threatening or potentially very severe. Something that's uh, not so severe, that was kind of more of a minor nuisance, was when a guy at work took some of that clear packing tape, you know, that stuff you box up boxes with and ship. He wrapped my whole bicycle in that. He was just playing a prank and he's just being stupid, but I was cleaning all the sticky stuff off of my bicycle for probably about a week. So it was very, very annoying. I had two friends of mine that have had similar pranks and similar things happen to their bicycles. One guy I know said that somebody, you see this brake lever right here? This brake lever is kept to the proper tension by this retaining bolt right here. This is when you push the lever, you'll see that the brake caliper moves and grabs the wheel, right? 
Well, somebody unloosened that on this guy's bike and this basically lost its tension. How often do you pay attention to that stuff? I mean, it didn't look like it was off or nothing. So the guy gets on his bicycle and he blows out into traffic like he always does at high speed, you know? And then when he needed to come to a stop, he pushed his brake lever and it went all the way to his handlebars and still was not stopping. Well, that scared the shit out of him, as you can imagine. You know, nothing worse than pulling your brake lever and not being able to stop. He noticed that somebody had undid the bolt, you know. Those things don't just come loose either. A girl that I know came out from her school and she had a piece of dog poop sitting on her seat. That's another example of a harmless prank, but somebody being a dickhead, you know, because it was disgusting. She wouldn't even ride her bike home. She just walked her bicycle and then cleaned off her seat with some Lysol and some disinfectant. Those are two more examples. One friend of mine, potentially life-threatening uh, uh, prank that was pulled on him where somebody messed with his bike. And then of course the other girl, I mean, that was just a harmless thing, but it's also very annoying and disgusting. Okay guys, this video is already getting long enough as it is, and I really wanna talk about the fourth reason why I would never lock my Brompton up outside, but that is going to take some time. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna break that part of the video up into a separate piece. We're gonna talk about the big one, theft. We're gonna talk about that in part two. So we're gonna spend some time on that subject. There are definitely some things that you should be really, really concerned about as it pertains to the Brompton itself. So I hope you guys tune in for part two where we discuss the topic of theft, especially as it pertains to the Brompton. So if you guys have any comments or questions, leave them down in the comment and question section. Slap a like on the video, and I will see you guys next time in part two. See you then, bye.